Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us again. It's it's great to get back into our Father's Word. Uh, I've really enjoyed our Passover time and our Pentecost time and our Holy Communions that we've had <coughs> and the lectures in between. And today, like I said, we're going to get back into Ephesians chapter 3. We had left off in verse 11, but I want to pick it up today in, in verse 8 to begin with. But before I do that, <clears throat> something has come to my attention that I think everyone needs to be aware of and uh, the best way I know how to say this I need everyone to pray and keep their uh, prayers and thoughts on Israel uh, because uh, we were given some information last night I don't know how accurate it is but it, it sounds relevant from someone who I believe is close to the Lord, but, but time will tell. But uh, evidently Israel is getting ready to uh, do some major damage to Iran. So, um, like I said, just, just keep that in your prayers. We know biblically that um, what will be taking place in the end times as far as Israel and it being surrounded by its enemies, which would be the enemies of God, of course. But um, this might be the precursor to that. I don't know. But I do know one thing. Uh, so far, as of today, the two witnesses hasn't arrived yet. So uh, let's just, just keep things in perspective. And... Um, and, and uh, keep your eyes to the east. So with that being said, uh, please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured forth upon each and every one of us, Father. We're, we're talking just before the camera came on, and it is so true that our cups truly runneth over with blessings. You, you show uh, your, your power and your authority throughout our lives, and you help us to achieve certain goals in life. But also, while we're doing that, we achieve the closeness with you. And that is, that is worth more than a, a trillion dollars to us, because it has nothing to do with a monetary value. The monetary that comes to us in these end times is just an extra, uh, an extra blessing to keep us comfortable. But the most important thing that we cherish is your love for us and your wisdom that you provide for us, that you help us because you know that we truly do want to serve you and, and we thank you for that, Father. We also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. Also, Father, we bring before you, we pray for Rachel and her baby, and we pray for all those who are struggling right now around this world. It's just a terrible situation that we see in our in our news broadcast and some of us have seen things uh, taking place right before our eyes and it's it's terrible how mankind is treating one another and how they're behaving but we know dear lord that you have told us what would be taking place in these end times but it's still at times hard to see and hard to watch hard to hear but father we thank you for your protection that you provide for your children and you give us insight of where to go and where not to go who to be with and who not to be with who to study and who not to study and always who to worship and that is you and we thank you for that we also pray dear Lord for Bernard and we pray for for all my my children my grandchildren my great-grandchildren all the seed of the clan of the Chanley's father and those associated with them, we pray for their protection. Also, Father, we pray for all those that have been studying with us for, 
for some time now and, and all those that are recently studying with us all around the world. Father, it's a great blessing and a privilege to serve you, knowing that there are people out there that truly want to study your word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And it is a great honor and a privilege to serve you by serving them. Also, Father, we bring before you, we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel. Wherever they are, whatever they are doing, we pray for their safety and, and their speedy return back to the sheepfold. And as I said earlier, Father, we pray for Israel and our nation, for thy kingdom to come, for thy will to be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, come, Lord, come. We are ready and we are prepared. And we pray, dear Lord, for those first responders every day they are on the front lines helping your children, as well as our military who are in arm's way or who are about to go into arm's way. We pray for their safety and speedy return home. Now, Father, we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see I pray that you open our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, getting back into our Father's Word. Like I said earlier, we're going to be um, studying, uh, continuing the book of Ephesians today, chapter 3. We left off at verse 11, but I want to pick it up today with verse 8 to because it's been a couple weeks now since we've studied this, so I want to bring it all in perspective before we begin our normal study in verse 12 today. So, with wisdom from our Heavenly Father, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, and it says, Unto me, now this is Paul speaking, he's, he's writing this down, and of course this is inspired from our Lord and Savior. He says, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, this is God's grace, unmerited favor, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And that would be the mystery. One of the mysteries, the, the, the power, the, the, the wisdom that God provides for his children. And verse 11 says, according to the eternal purpose which he, being our father, proposed or planned in Christ Jesus our Lord. It was God's plan from the beginning to bring this mystery, to bring this wisdom to his children. Now, some may ask, well, why did it take so long? What would you, what, what do you think, why would it take God like 6,000 years to, to bring this mystery forward to mankind? Any, have you ever thought about that? No comments? Well, the fact is, I believe... Knowing what we know about the first earth, first heaven age, of what people did then, and being born into the flesh age, that, what's the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? In other words, they are considerably like they were in the first earth, first heaven age. So it took a while, it seems, it appears to me, because in the Old Testament, there's a lot of things that are hidden, that's spoke, spoken about, even about the millennial age. 
but unless you have been given the gift of understanding, remember what we what we covered last time, that that gift was given. Remember we talked about this in uh, on our Pentecost. That gift of wisdom and understanding of the scriptures had to be given. They didn't learn it. It had to be given to them. It's like God opened their part of their brain where they could understand a, little, a lot deeper. Well, why did it take so long is because I believe that mankind wasn't prepared for it. It's just like if you're given some information, uh, what would be a good example? Let's say uh, you're, you're a mechanic. You're a very good mechanic. But for some reason, you decide one day you want to be a doctor. Well, you may not have the mentality to become a doctor. Because to become a doctor, you've got to really have all, all cylinders firing. You've got to learn all kinds of... Well, you, you took nursing and all that. You, you went through the uh, emergency, medicine. emergency medicine. There's a lot involved that people don't realize. And until you get involved in that, it takes a long period of time. How long does it take to be a mechanic versus how long it takes to be a doctor? You know, that's just a, a light kind of understanding of that. In other words, it's a gift that you're given by God, a gift of being a good mechanic, a gift of being a good doctor. But just because you're a good mechanic is not going to make you a good doctor. And I'm using this metaphor because it's the same in the Old Testament. Just because you have all this information. Like Paul had all this information of the Old Testament, which was the Torah. He knew it all, backwards and forwards, in many languages. But he didn't understand about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Didn't understand about Christ, which means he wasn't understanding what was being developed of the New Testament until God revealed to him. He blessed him with that understanding. That's what Paul is saying here, basically, in verse 9, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. In other words, taking the Old Testament and revealing it to mankind now in the New Testament. Does that make sense? Wouldn't you say that through the Old Testament times, the prophets were given some of that wisdom, and the people killed the prophets. And it seems like maybe up to a certain time that God said, okay, enough. No, I understand what you're saying, but I'll disagree with that because we're talking about the mystery of God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about His infinite wisdom through prophets prophets didn't teach about that because they didn't know it. Mm -hmm. They knew God, and God knew them, but it was basically to lead Israel to uh, out of sinning. To this point, basically. Well, remember the prophets ended long before uh, Christ came. Mm -hmm. They're, they're between the Old Testament and the New Testament is what, about a 400 year span mm. of time? So, see, the prophets taught basically about what would come, mm -hmm. teaching about future events, but Israel had to maintain a closeness with God and get rid of their sin. That hasn't changed at all since then. Mm -hmm. But that's as far as the prophets went. Where now the uh, such as Paul and the other apostles have been given the fullness of the mystery of God, and this is what they're trying to teach mankind. Mm -hmm. So we come to verse twelve, and it but says that the, yes, the mystery of God has always been known ever since the beginning, but it's just by the ones it is by the election, if you will, throughout time, you know. Those that what what are you calling mystery? 
Those that are righteous in God's eyes, well, you mean? Well, what are we talking about the mystery here? What is the mystery, the, what we're talking you know, about here? The, the key to the kingdom? That's part and of it. How, but how, to, how to, you know, um, become, you know, get to heaven? Righteous in God's eyes. It's part of it. Listen, it, it's going to elaborate here in verse 12. Okay. Verse 12 says, In whom, did I do a verse 11? Okay, verse 12. In whom we have boldness and, here it is, access. You see, they didn't have access to God in the Old Testament. The only ones that had access to God were the prophets and some kings like David or Solomon. But the majority of the people didn't have access to God. Mm -hmm. They had to have a priest go in the Holy of Holies and pray for them. And, or and, and Elijah. And yes. See, but now the, the big part of the mystery is we all have access. Mm -hmm. See, that what was a mystery before is not a mystery to us, if you understand this. It says, in whom we have boldness and access. This is God's plan. This has always been God's plan. And access, and here it is, with confidence by the faith of him. That's of Christ, which is the word of God. We, have, we now have access. You can have access. That doesn't mean you do have access. You can have access by your faith in him. You can have access by you accepting him as your Lord and Savior. And here, here's what happens when you have this access, and to gain it, you have confidence. You're confident that you're not just talking to God, but God is talking to you. See? He leads you, He guides you, He directs you. And, and that's part of it. And I'm going to have to take a brief moment here.